left. Didn't want to stop. I was holding the button down. Um, newly rebuilt engine, newly rebuilt transmission, the shaft realigned and put back in. And Ron noticed that the engine was getting hot. The gauges was reading hot. He came down to read the, to um, get a reading, a direct reading off of the engine. And the stomach box is trying to catch on fire. Hi, I'm Ron. And I'm Marie. Ten years ago, we bought a broken down trawler for $4,000. And nothing worked, not even the kitchen sink. After a lot of hard work and help from our friends and family, we moved aboard Elixir full time. And now we are cruising this old boat while the work and fun continues. So subscribe and give us a like and come along with us, cruising this old boat. <laughs> come on up the ladder. <laughs> it's tied. Okay, well that helps. <laughs> We had dinner with Jill, Ru, Jill and Rudy last night, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time. And we met them up in uh, Maryland at the MTOA rendezvous. When was that? Gosh, I think two or three years ago. Okay, probably. yeah. The and then now we meet again here yeah, in the yard. It's, it's really awesome. So anyway. We had a great dinner too. That was good. I thought so. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of nice conversation. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm admiring your beautiful boat and this galley is gorgeous. Well, thank you. Ron did a wonderful job. Yeah. He did. Let me show it to you. Let me okay. turn this off. Yeah, I get a little We were splashing, uh, being put back into the water and um, Ron reversed, put it in reverse and backed up. And then there's a really shallow area right there and so you need to go forward he went to put it in forward and his forward would not work so he asked me to go take the, the helm and he went down into the engine room and did something and worked with the shifter cable and um, and um, got it into forward so i was at the helm and then um he went back into the engine room and while we're underway going slow and he's trying to get it to where it can go into neutral and reverse. He got it to where so it's going into forward and it's going into neutral but it's not going into reverse right now. We're going to be anchoring I guess at Cumberland Sound. Uh, we just left St. Mary's uh, Boat Works in, in Georgia. And we're going to go to Cumberland Sound and anchor out so we don't have very far to go. But we'll just have to drop the anchor. We won't be able to back down on it. We'll make sure we're nowhere near other boats. You know, we've got a good spot over there we always take. Um, if it's available, and it usually is. Um, but anyway, um, so he's got more work to do. He was stressed with, you know, he hasn't been driving the boat for two months. And, you know, it's always stressful when you get started again. So he was a little stressed to begin with, just knowing that it was shallow and there was boats all around us when we were backing out and the engine hadn't been, you know, it's a rebuild engine that only had, we only had 15 hours on it and a new rebuilt transmission that hadn't been run. And um, so, yeah, he, he was nervous about how it's gonna go and then the shifter cables messed up. I think at one point it had gotten bent and he has the stuff to replace it, but he's just had so many projects lately that he hadn't gotten to that. So I guess that's gonna be added to the list. Anyway, um, we're underway, we're safe. We didn't hit anybody, we didn't run aground. Um, 
all as well. For um, non-boaters, we keep a journal. Yep, there it is. And this particular journal is called the Evergreen Pacific Publishing Logbook. And it's uh, specifically for boaters. And it has, um, what are some of those tabs on there? Vessel information, cruising log, fuel log, maintenance log, radio log, and vessel inventory. Some very, very important information to keep track of. And so, how many books have we gone through? Quite a few books over the years. That's about the fourth, I think. Yeah, about, he says about our fourth book, I agree. We try to get this same one, so each one, they're each from each year, or well, you can go more than a year in one book, but um, each time we replace it, then the book is similar to the one from before that. So you've been writing for quite a while, so tell me what you wrote. I wrote, 1611 anchored in Cumberland Sound had a bad start as boat would not go into forward as we pulled out of the yard the linkage was not properly adjusted okay that's what I wrote okay but you also went down in the engine room a couple of times and made adjustments and got it fixed yep so you gotta tell that part too. <laughs> <laughs> then I gotta write more. Yeah. You're a man of few words. Actually, I didn't adjust it while we were underway. I just took it off and we ran all that time with it not hooked up. And we dropped the anchor without backing down. Yeah. Not gonna say that. Not gonna tell him that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still on the fence as whether it's necessary to back down on an anchor. So. Oh really? I haven't been convinced of its necessity. The first time you swing, you pull the anchor out. Sometimes. Most of the time. Unless you wrapped around a rock or. Yeah. You're something. just gonna pull the anchor out, and it's got to reset on its own. So, as a reset on its own, why do we have to worry about setting it the first time? Good question. Although, at least it lets us know it can set. Because we've been places where it wouldn't set no matter what. So that's, that's kind true. of good to know while you're still under power paying attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Noticed that the engine was getting hot the gauges was reading hot he came down to read the to um, get a reading a direct reading off of the engine and the stomach box is trying to catch on fire when are we gonna quit having problems with the boat it's so discouraging he told me he put in the brand spanking new stuffing box he put in five wraps of stuffing 
the and flax, uh, flax, the flax. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, or something. loosely speaking. Okay. And, uh, and he said, then he wrenched it down as tight as he could, and then backed it off a little bit. And I was thinking, we're supposed I, to. I would never it. wrench it down as tight. I'd I'd rather tighten it a little bit at a time until I get it to where I want it. But yeah, sure enough, he. Uh, he sealed it up too good, so it's not getting any water in to lubricate it, and it's the stuffing that's catching on fire. Yeah, I saw the smoke when I came down, and it was quite a while after I set yeah. the after I dropped the anchor. Yeah. So now it's hot. Which makes it hard to work with. <clears throat> and. But I mean, I got it completely off, and there's no water coming in. Yeah, he's got too much in there. Hey, there comes the water. It's dripping now. Is it? Yeah. Excellent. It just it just needed time to soak through the flax or whatever material he used. But I mean I didn't even pull over into the anchor into an anchorage. I'm just on the channel side of the channel. I mean it should be flooding right now with with you I, having I've it got off the of, collar completely off. Well, it's got to soak those things up, and it's probably absorbing, the heat of them is probably absorbing a lot of that water. Well, plus we don't want, you take hot metal and get it cold too fast with water, and you can warp it. Don't want to warp our shaft. But I didn't want it to catch fire either, so. <laughs> it burnt my finger. Well, we need to put some... Um, Apple cider vinegar, regular vinegar, or mustard on your finger. That'll take care of the burn. And I'm supposed to look for one drop per minute. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I came down before and checked it, and it seemed there was some water coming in, but apparently not. Do you remember when I, after I came and checked it, I came up and showed you that? The oil, the grease, the It looked kind of like black. oil or something. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what it was. So that was from the flax burning. That was from the flax burning is what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. You want some mustard for your finger? No, I'm all right at the moment. Got an alarm going off during all this. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Handed. Boy, that's loud. All right, what is it? This one's a weather alert. So, I wanted to get up into here. See, we're at seven and nine foot, nine, seven foot and nine foot, and it's out of the channel. But instead, Ron wanted me to drop the anchor really quick, so I'm right here. And on top of it, I had to put out 50 foot of chain because the time I thought it was like 20 foot deep. It started the engine again. Coast Guard Sector Jacksonville. Coast Guard Sector Jacksonville. Turn that down. Um, They must be getting ready to do something around the Cape Canaveral area. Go ahead and put it in gear and bring out the anchor. Previously saw a go fast boat, to, you know, a little go fast boat. Went fast past us and they ended up on a sandbar inside the markers. How on earth did we get a crab in our boat? Pan and try to catch them and throw them overboard. I don't know what else to do because I don't really want to kill them, but I don't want them on the boat either. He's a moving, he's on the move. I gotta go catch him. I don't want to pick him up though. What's the best way to catch him? <laughs> he gave me the heebie-jeebies. He went behind the can. Dustpan. Now if you can just stay in my dustpan until I get him knocked over the side of the boat. Uh, uh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? No, oh, no, 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 no. Don't go down there. Don't go down there. Okay. So I got him overboard. I don't like spiders.
spiders. I don't like roaches. I don't like biting flies. And I don't want critter fritters crawling around on my boat. Thanks for watching.